What's up, YouTube? Today, I want to discuss how to make pads and atmospheres using Vital's comb filter. So the idea is to kind of set it into a kind of resonator mode. Let's dive in and have a look at how awesome it is to do in this plugin. So for those who don't know Vital, it's a new synthesizer that's just come out. There's various versions. There's a free version and a paid for version. Even the paid for version is really, really well priced for what you get. Um, in my opinion, it's on par with some of the top synthesizers on the market. And the free version is actually not very watered down compared to, you know, some of the other free stuff on the market. Um, you actually get all the capabilities and stuff of the synth. Um, it's just you get less wavetables and presets and stuff that come with it. So I have done a video on my top 10 features of the plugin. I'm going to post a link in the description and a little button over here so you can go check that out as well. But anyway, the idea for this video is I want to use the comb filters to kind of create a kind of resonator style effect. And this is really cool to create atmospheres and pads and this kind of thing. And one really, really handy feature that's built in here is that the you have the ability to view the kind of uh, the cutoff frequencies and that kind of thing as semitones. So if by default yours is not set to this, you can go over to the advanced tab and you can set display frequency units in semitones over here. Um, if we turn this resonance up of the comb filter, it kind of gives it this like ringy kind of effect. So it's, it's probably most easily audible if we set up like a quick pluck over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the level of oscillator one all the way down and we're gonna create a very small kind of envelope using one of these LFOs. Let's turn it to envelope mode. So it just triggers on a key hit and then we can set this to modulate the level over here. So I wanna get like a really, really small pluck so you can really hear like the effect of the filter here, um, that kind of like tail that the filter creates. Okay, so we got a very, very short pluck. So here, what we might wanna do is, so we can kind of hear the tail of the sound. We can just hit the key kind of once uh, and hear the tail. We can turn up the release of the sound and then give it some kind of bulge over here. And now when we start to tweak these parameters of the filter, we'll hear that kind of ringing off a little bit more. So we can turn this resonance all the way up and you'll hear that immediately kind of gives us almost an acoustic guitar kind of tone. So resonance uh, or comb filter resonance is particularly useful for kind of physical modeling synthesis because you can create these kind of very natural acoustic kind of spaces um, by just changing these kind of frequencies of the filter and that kind of thing. And you can use uh, you can use combinations of them to create all sorts of weird effects and stuff as well. So I'm quickly gonna bypass the filter so you can hear the difference of what this filter is actually adding to the sound. That's pretty cool, hey? So there's various settings we can go into to kind of further alter uh, the sound. I like to key track this because then when we play like a melody or something, it actually key tracks that kind of resonant tone very nicely. Check this out. And again, I'm just gonna bypass it so you hear what it sounds like without it. It's just like a pluck sound. So the cool thing about this is you're not limited to using a kind of pitch based source. We can turn off the oscillator and we can use a sample and we can kind of pluck the input with a noise source um, and create like a weird shape here to change the sort of excitation algorithm of the filter. So here by default, this should be a white noise, I think. So let's apply this LFO to the level of the noise. So we've got a kind of hi-hat desk type of sound over there. Um, we can pitch this around to kind of change the timbre of the noise as well. But at this point, this is kind of irrelevant because the pitch is gonna be generated via the kind of resonance of the comb filter. Check this out. Okay, so we're gonna actually have to set this to send uh, the sampler to the filter like this over here. Or you can layer them, you know, you can put in like a, uh, you know, you're not limited to obviously because this is a wavetable synth, you can use any types of wavetables. There are some noise shapes in here, which can get some interesting textures and stuff. 
So here's where we can start getting interesting. As you noticed here, this this is completely out of tune. It's like minus 10. So we're using the pitch of these oscillators rather to create a timbre, not to create the actual pitch of the sound. So you can get really experimental with it. You know, you can have some really high pitched stuff going in, but that, like the tone of the tail is still going to be the same pitch as before. So you kind of create these like acoustic sounding sounds with very basic subtractive synthesis methods. Um, very, very cool technique. So here we can dive back into the filter and start playing with some of these parameters to change the sound. This cut is pretty cool. This kind of changes the decay of the filter. Check this out. And then we can also change the shape of the filter using this blend mode over here. So you've got various different types of resonant uh, comb filters. Again, um, within each one, there's kind of three that you can mix between, which is really, really cool. So I'm just going to play around with this, try to find a cool texture, and then we can carry on playing with the sound a little bit more. So here we can start altering the pitch of the sound over here. So we can jump in and actually type in, for example, like minus 12, and this is going to be one octave down. And it changes the relationship between the kind of like the, the oscillator's pitch and the uh, resonator's pitch. So you can kind of sometimes find these sweet spots, you know, if it's kind of tuned to similar frequencies, it kind of gives it this weird texture. I'm going to see if I can uh, recreate that now. That's cool. I like that. So here we can kind of change the the sort of uh, shape of the pluck by drawing in a unique kind of shape here with this LFO. And this is why I kind of left it as an LFO rather than, uh, or I changed it to an LFO rather than an envelope because you got a little bit more control with creating these kind of weird things here. Check this out. Cool, that sounds good. Let's dive into some effects. So the chorus in Vital is incredibly cool for various reasons. Both as a chorus effect, it sounds really, really good. 
but I picked up this little trick. I believe it was on a data broth video. I'm gonna try to post a link to the video where I found it in the description. Um, basically, you can use the chorus as a kind of resonator effect in its own or reverb kind of effect in its own by just detuning the frequency to freeze. And what happens is all of these kind of like, uh, let's call them tape heads, just freeze. And the thing about a chorus is those would be moving and that's what kind of gives it this kind of like organic moving texture, but we don't want that. We want to use each one as a kind of little uh, resonator effect. And then by tuning up this feedback amount, each of these kind of gets its own little reverb and we can kind of smear those using these kind of like delay and depth setting over here to create different kind of reverb algorithms in inverted commas. And this is really cool in combination with the actual reverb because the chorus reverb trick is very kind of dirty and digital, very, very full of texture. Whereas the reverb reverb is kind of very natural. So I like to use the chorus kind of reverb trick in more of a sound design context to create these kind of textures to pads and then just add a reverb to make it bigger, if that makes sense. So then to make it more of a pad and less of a kind of pluck, what we can do is we can turn this LFO back into sync mode and then change the kind of speed at which it plucks these sounds. And then we can add, you know, another LFO, for example, to create a separate kind of layer of movement, maybe another oscillator as well. Uh, let's just see what was this tuned to. We can turn the smooth down. Let's see if this has any effect. As
awesome. That should give you guys enough to think about. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to be posting this preset to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. As usual, if you like this video, hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet. And maybe let me know your thoughts in the comments. Yeah, see you guys next time. Cheers.